to uh, Revelation chapter 14 tonight. Revelation chapter 14. What's that they shout in the middle of that ver- chorus? His redeeming blood. Chum, chum. It's something they yell. Full paid or so, something. Anyway. Yeah, when I was reading, I thought, what is it they shout right there? Anyway. Revelation chapter four, 14. Uh, we're getting to, it, it talks a lot in these next chapters about voices, different things that are being said. Uh, we, we looked last week at chapters 12 and 13, and uh, some people call it the terrible trio. You know, you see Satan, the Antichrist, the false prophet. We're, we're probably at the middle of the, the tribulation, although I have to say, uh, there's all different ideas as to when the middle of the tribulation uh, occurs. You, you remember it started off with the seven seals, and uh, the seventh seal then is seven trumpets. Some people think the middle starts at the seventh trumpet. Others think uh, different, different things. Uh, the... The, the ones we're going to look at tonight are the vials, or sometimes people call them the bowls of, of judgment. These are very similar to the trumpets, but more severe. And uh, we don't know how long each one lasts. It, it, with all, all of these, it doesn't say, you know, this lasted 12 days or 48 hours or, you know, something like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't know if it actually says that that's how long it lasts or how long the pain lasts. But uh, anyway, so it's, it's, the timing is... Very Eastern. You know, Westerners write from this point to that point. Easterners just write. And, it, you know, it, I, I'm probably exaggerating a little bit there, but uh, some of the chapters, some of the things we'll look at will actually be occurring later or might have occurred already. But, uh, you know, they, the Bible gives us, um, puts it in the way that God wants us, us to see it. The Voices of Victory, chapters 14 and 15 are probably the prologue to the seven vials, um, V-I-A-L-S. And we, the first voice we hear is that of the 144,000. You'll remember them from, uh, from chapter 7. So chapter 14, I'm just going to read the first five verses to start. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 144 and, 140 and 4,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 140 and 4,000 which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Uh, so the first voice we hear is that of 144,000. Can you imagine hearing 144,000 men sing? <laughs> that, that, was, that is going to be in, incredible. Uh, the next voices we hear are, are some angels. And it'll, uh, it uses, uh, I saw another angel, another angel, a third angel, and so on. Now let's read starting in verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Hear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed 
are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city and blood came out of the winepress even under the horse's bridles of the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. I have written in here, that's 160 miles, uh, whatever that is in, in kilometers. So you hear the voice of the angels. Uh, some of it's uh, encouraging, some of it's scary. Uh, the first one is saying, basically in verses 6 and 7, judgment is coming. Fear God, for the hour of his judgment is come. And then in, in verse 8, Babylon is fallen. Uh, that's what I was mentioning about the timing. That actually uh, takes place in chapter 18. Uh, so I, uh, you say this is a, a kind of a prologue to some of these things. Uh, in verses 9 through 13, uh, the voice of the angel is saying, basically, es escape God's wrath. God's wrath is coming. And, and it seems to be saying... Uh, you know, turn from, from your sin. Uh, in, um, in, in verses 14 through 20, he talks about the harvest. Now, this is, is not like when Jesus said in, in Matthew chapter 9, uh, let me refresh your memory here, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. He was talking about people getting saved. This is a different kind of harvest. This is the harvest of judgment. Uh, it's like Matthew chapter 13, uh, verse 30, when he says, Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. Uh, that's, that's, it's not even exactly that, because there's, there's good wheat in amongst that. Uh, he talks about the wheat, and he's talking about judgment. Then he talks about grapes, uh, bringing those in for harvest. And, and again, he, he spells out very specifically that this is the, uh, the, rat, the great wine press of the wrath of God. And uh, he, he talks about this more in chapter 19, for instance, uh, verse 15. He treadeth the wine press of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Um, so we, we hear the voice of uh, the 144,000. We hear the voices of the angels, uh, mainly about judgment. Then in chapter 15 and following, we hear some of the voice of the, of the victors, you might say. Uh, let me read chapter 15, verse, the first four verses. We're reading quite a bit tonight. I'm just making a few comments. I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them, them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. Now, the voice of the victors one of the things that shows us is we don't have to yield to the world system. We're not going to lose by following the Lord. There's, we sang the song tonight, there's victory in Jesus. He's already won the victory. And the next part is pretty much the voice of fulfillment. As we come down to chapter 16 and see the judgments of God. You know, God has said many times that he is going to judge. People don't like that. You know, they, they really resist that and they resent that. The idea that, that 
They're sinful enough that God uh, would condemn them. But that's true of everyone. Uh, Thessalonians puts it this way. To you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe. It's a, there's coming a time of, of judgment and we can count on it. Just as God will keep his word that he saves, God will keep his word that he judges. And as you read the book of Revelation, you really have to be impressed that people need to know the Lord. They need to know the Lord now before they believe a lie, before it's, it's too late. So let's, let's read on. I'm going to actually read on down through most of chapter 16. I hope you don't mind me doing this. At least I know when I'm reading the Bible, you're hearing good stuff, all right? <laughs> Uh, I might say the wrong thing. God never will. Uh, chapter 15, verse 5. After that, I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous, grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshiped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. And power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast. And his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because their pains and their sores, because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. The water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet." For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. We'll just stop reading there. We'll finish it in just a moment. Uh, Armageddon is, is spelled out in chapter 19. Uh, most people have heard of that. People often refer to it. It's, it's just part of literature, let, let alone uh, the, the scriptures. Um, the six vials, man, they're, they're awful, aren't they? I mean, I find it helpful to read the Bible out loud sometimes. And it just, you just hear it better you know, than when you just read it silently to yourself. Uh, what an awful time that's going to be. Well, then in, in verse 17 and following, at the end of verse 17, he says, it is done. Let, let's read the rest. The seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. There came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. The great city was divided into three parts. The cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, 
and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. I'm told a, a talent is about 125 pounds. That's uh, over 50 kilos. A hail following. Uh, one person that I was reading says he thinks that when this earthquake happens, the earth is going to go back to its shape before the flood. The mountains will drop and uh, things will just really, uh, really change. The, the islands will, will disappear and, and so on. Uh, it's going to be a, an, an amazing time. Uh, God is saying, it's done. This, this is it. It's interesting, in verse 17, he says he puts the seventh vial into the air. Uh, Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. And uh, he has no uh, power with God. Now, as you see all this, uh, what impresses me, uh, it's a great time of judgment. Our God is great and worthy to be praised. You know, he's not just something we add to our life. We, we fall before him in, in worship. And there's so much you see of, of the Lord and of Jesus in these, these chapters. Uh, I just picked a, a few things. And in chapter 14, verse 6, he talks about the everlasting gospel. Having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. And sometimes I think we think of the gospel as just, just starting with Jesus, you know, at the, at the cross. But uh, the gospel is everlasting. It's, it's, it's eternal. It's eternal life. And the, the gospel is, is everlasting. In chapter 14, verse 12, the end, it talks about they, they keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Uh, saving faith. Our, our faith is in the everlasting gospel. It's in the God of the gospel, uh, the Lord Jesus. Uh, in Philippians 1, he puts it this way. Let your conversation, that, that's your manner of life, be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. How we live should beautify the gospel. <laughs> It should honor the gospel. Uh, that whether I come and see or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Yeah, you know, the gospel is so important in our lives. The eternal gospel. Uh, if we're saved, we're saved by the gospel. And if people are going to get saved, they've got to hear the gospel. Yeah, you know, we're not a club where we just want to build our numbers. Yeah, you know, we don't want people just to come along. We want them to know the Lord. Even if they don't come here, we want them to know the Lord. I had a phone call today about, you know, some folks, and I said, listen, if they can, if they can go to your church, glory to God, you know. Uh, we're, we're, we're happy if somebody's going to be obedient to the Lord, whether it's here, there, or wherever, you know. Uh, it's, a, it's the everlasting gospel. It's important. Uh, the second thing I, I noticed is Jesus is worth following. You know, the more you read this, the more you think, Man, I, I don't want to go any other way. <laughs> I don't want to be uh, left behind. I don't want to have uh, you know, the problems that he's talking about here. Again, back to chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. You know, sometimes as Christians, we think, oh man, life is so tough. I, you know, I broke a fingernail today. You know, <laughs> I, I'm exaggerating there. But, uh, life can be pretty tough. Uh, you know, there's, there's been folks who've gone through some pretty pretty difficult things. There's going to be people who will trust the Lord in the tribulation, we believe. And he's saying here, listen, it's going to be worth it. Trusting the Lord is going to be worth it. Uh, patiently following him. Uh, chapter 14, verse 1, talks about those who have the Father's name written in their foreheads. 144,000. Interesting to think about that, isn't it? Because, you know, we usually think about that with people who are following Satan. In the mark of the beast kind of a thing. Uh, verse, where am I here? Verse 4. Uh, These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These are redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Uh, now, they have the, the mark of the Savior, of the Lamb. What a contrast to Satan's followers. If you read what we read in chapter 14, verses 9 and following, the third angel said with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark, man, then he really lays it out, doesn't he? He's going to drink the wine of the wrath of God. Um, much better to suffer during Satan's rule and reign with Jesus forever than to reign with Satan for a few years and suffer forever. This is the patience of saints. <laughs> uh, you know, when you're having a rough day, remember, 
hey, eternity is going to be forever. <laughs> uh, this, this is just a vapor. Eternity is forever. Uh, the gospel is everlasting. He's worth following. It's eternal life. Then the, the other thing I noticed in chapter 15, verse 3, is the song of the Lamb. Most people like singing. But even if you don't like singing, I think you're going to like the song of the Lamb. <laughs> uh, he calls it the, the song of, uh, they sing the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. It, it, it'd probably be an interesting study there to see how those, those correlate. Uh, but just in, in thinking about that, Isaiah indicates that Jesus is our song. Let me read Isaiah 12, uh, verses 2 and 3. The Lord is, is our song. Isaiah 12, 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall we draw water out of the wells of salvation. That's a beautiful picture, isn't it? <laughs> Drawing water out of the well of salvation. Go to that well every day. You know, if you're saved, you're at, you have access. Uh, Jesus is our song. Jesus gives us a song. In the Ephesians, probably a passage you're pretty familiar with, Ephesians 5, verse 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. If we would think the thoughts of the Lord, if we would sing the thoughts of the Lord, it'll help us. The song of the Lamb. Uh, use it during the day. You wake up at night, you have a song in the night. <laughs> the song of the Lamb. And then one final thing, chapter 16, verse 17. It is done. It reminded me of Jesus on the cross, didn't, doesn't it? It is finished. Uh, Jesus finishes what he starts. Uh, he, in Revelation 1, he's called the beginning and the ending. <laughs> he starts things. He's the creator. He's the one who he will save us and you know, he's the beginner, but he's also the ender. And uh, what a blessing it is to know that our trust is in the beginning and the ending, <laughs> in the Lord Jesus. One of my favorite verses on that is Philippians 1.6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Uh, that means eternally. And God will do what he says. And he's the, he's the finisher. Well, uh, if you go back to that verse, chapter 14, verse, verse 12, here is the patience of the saints. Uh, we need to be patient. <laughs> uh, life, life can be tough and life can be long. I, I don't know. I guess compared to eternity, not. But we just need to be patient, patient in the Lord. Uh, in 2 Thessalonians 3, 5, he says, The Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. The love of God and the patient waiting for Christ. Uh, those go together. But we also, he says, need to be watching. We need to be patient. We need to be watching. Revelation 16, verse 15. I come as a thief. <laughs> Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Uh, he's just saying there, be faithful. Yeah, just keep being faithful to the Lord. So many verses about that. A couple in Peter that I wrote down. Uh, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Be patient, be watching, be faithful. Uh, 2 Peter 3.14, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. God is uh, he's the author of, What's the word that goes to that? Author and finisher of, of our faith. He's the beginner. He's the ender. Uh, you know, we can, we can trust him. He'll, he'll look after us. We don't want to be part of Satan's world. Uh, he, he's the prince of the power of the air now, but he'll be nothing later. And, uh, you know, pride is, is like, if you ever caught a puff, puffer fish, one of those puff fish, man, they can puff up, but they're, they're not worth catching. <laughs> you know, that's not the way we want to live. Any comments or questions before we take some prayer requests?